All right, everybody, we are here again, once again, once again, I got someone else, another phenomenal human being, uh, a friend of mine. Uh, we have grown to become friends and talk often about, about real estate and about life and just business in general. And uh, I mean, I wanted to bring her on because she has another unique story. Um, uh, she has another uh, uh, um, you know, point of view of going through this process of having no deals, fresh in wholesaling, not even knowing what wholesaling is, to getting deals done and money in her account. And that's what everybody is looking to do. So I like to bring these stories up. And so without further ado, uh, go ahead and introduce yourself and tell everybody where you're at and where, you know, a little bit about yourself. Well, my name is Courtney. Um, I stay here in Atlanta. I've been here for about three years now. Um, I was introduced to wholesaling about a year ago. Um, and I really didn't have much mentorship, much coaching. Um, I just followed a bunch of YouTube videos. I had a mentor that kind of, um, <laughs> right, a mentor who kind of, um, he gave us a little bit of guidance, and then one day I didn't hear from him no more. So I kind of got discouraged. Um, so I quit, and, I, you know, just focused on working every day, and I came across an event on meetup.com. It was actually uh, Tommy's event. Um, back in October of last year, um, and he actually had Max Maxwell there. And yeah. so um, I got inspired again, started studying YouTube, started reading. Um, and then January, I just started full time. So Nice, nice. And you said something uh, there that, that kills most people, not just in wholesaling, but any, any business venture, entrepreneur, entrepreneurial venture is uh, discouraged. Like you got discouraged. What, like, what were some of the things that really discouraged you from this process when you were trying to kind of like do it on your own or do it from just watching YouTube videos? What were some of the things that kind of discouraged you? Well, I didn't really have any guidance. I really didn't know um, where to start. Um, no one around me knew anything about wholesaling. Um, I think I had maybe one friend who had spoken to me about it, but she didn't even know anything about it. She just knew that you had to get a contract and find a buyer. Um, <laughs> So <laughs> I just didn't. A couple other steps. Yeah. Those, those, those <laughs> right. So I just, um, I really didn't understand. Like, and like I said, I had the mentor, um, but he just gave us, okay, you have to skip trace it and tell us where to go to skip trace. He said, pull these lists, drive for dollars, but he really didn't say, okay, drive for dollars and look for this. You know, he said, go to the courthouse, but he said, he didn't say pull this particular list. So um, I, I just really, you know, I kept doing it. I kept doing it. I said, man, I, I don't even understand what I'm doing. You know what? Just forget yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, that's tough because it's like you're banging your head up against the wall. And it's like, man, I'm doing what you told me to do, but I'm not getting any results. Right? This wall is not going anywhere. And, uh, yeah, it's, that's tough when you don't have that, that guidance and you really don't know what, what's, what's next. So, so you kind of fast forward. You, you said you saw us on the meetup, came to the meetup. What, what was one of the things that kind of triggered you and was like, yeah, I, I want to try this again. I, I can do this. Well, just the energy. I mean, at that meetup was just phenomenal. I mean, to be honest, um, actually, Tony was there um, and just listening to all you guys speak. It just gave me like a, a, a burst of energy and motivation. So I just went home and just start, you know, YouTube and stuff and just listening to all these different videos. And so. You know, I just got motivated. And another thing, I started going to, like, meetup.com and going to, like, the real meetings in the area yeah. um, and just listening to and meeting other wholesalers and other people that had the same mindset. And that kind of just got me motivated. And I was, I was ready by then. So I remember kept coming to your um, events and speaking to you. And I think maybe by, like, the fourth or fifth event, by then you kind of recognized me a little <laughs> bit. So I was like, <laughs> okay, okay, he, he knows who I am a little bit, you know, so let me keep coming. So that kind of, you know, just the energy from those events kind of like really helped me out. Yeah. But you know what I like about it is that um, I could have events. Max could have events. Anybody could have events. But you took action in coming to them. Right. And so <clears throat> I think a lot of times we we don't see the, the path. We think the path is linear. We think that we just go from hit point A to point B and, and that's it. And really, a lot of times to get you your first deal, you had to do a lot of zigzagging along that path. And some of those zigzagging mo uh, 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 directions that you went to were coming to meetups and just essentially being around and being in the presence of people that were either talking about it or doing it. 
Right. And I think, too, like um, with wholesaling, one of the key factors is you have to have your mindset right. You know what I mean? Because you're going to be, you know, doing something consistently. You have to build momentum. And sometimes you're just not going to get the results, you know, tomorrow. And you have to be focused and consistent and, you know, positive and keep going until you land your first deal. Yeah. Yeah. So. We're at this point where, you know, at that point, I don't think you were in the program yet. You didn't start with us yet. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but you were, you were coming to the meetups, you were doing, you know, free YouTube videos. Um, you already had one mentor that kind of started with you and then just kind of like dropped you off and left you. Right. <laughs> right. Um, what, what was the deciding factor? When were you were like, you know what, let me just hop into this and, you know, invest in myself and do the ET course. Um, I want to say it was around like, uh january maybe february um at one of your meetups and i think we were playing like someone was playing a game or something like that in the i forgot her name latasha that's her name she ended up saying you know you should join this course so then I, I said okay well let me go look at it so i looked at it i said all right i'm gonna join the course so i joined the course and i actually didn't open it for maybe like two weeks and so <laughs> really you know, I can see that right I can see that you're in the, you're doing work or not <laughs> yeah I was just all over the place so finally um I opened up the course and I started listening to you and I said man you know this stuff is good stuff but I really feel like there's a disconnect um but I was doing everything that you know that you that you told me to do um yeah. in the course um and then I went back to another event I think it was like March and um and then that's when, you know, we started, I started nagging you about giving me a little extra coaching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because the, the process was like, you know, um, cause everybody's different. Right. So I think that's why we have like the coaching sessions is that, um, sometimes, um, certain people respond really, really well to like reading the book. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and then some people are auditory. They need to like, just hear it over and over and over again. And then some people are visual and we have, like the video coaching, we have the 25 modules, as you know, right? But um, sometimes, like when we have these Sunday and Wednesday coaching calls, like literally you were just on, I saw your name on there, right? Um, you have these Sunday and Wednesday coaching calls, and you get to ask questions and get some of that, that extra, extra uh, TLC, uh, if you will, to, to really make sure that you have all your questions answered and that you're, you're going through it. And I think I really love that about it, man. But when that happened, when that happened, you still hadn't had a deal. Now, walk me through from that point. What did your first deal like look like? How did that come about? Well, it's kind of crazy. Um, so um, you gave me some coaching. Um, and I think what I needed was structure. I think I had like, you know, um, the direction. I think I just needed the structure on how to really kind of, you know, structure everything. So that's really what I was lacking. So it's crazy. Um, so I was at um, a family event um, twice in, in one week and I, and I was, you know, telling my family about wholesaling and mm -hmm. I was just excited. And, you know, my, my uncle heard me, he said, um, Hey, you know, um, I have this property in Rome that, that I'm trying to get rid of. Um, you know, and I just can't seem to get rid of it. And I was like, well, what's the situation? You know, he was like, oh, you know, we rent it out, you know, we rent it out to a friend. Um, you know, we're just tired of dealing with it. Um, you know, I think I'm just going to, you know, list it for like 100K or 130K, something like that, he said. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, okay. I said, well, what I do is, um, you know, I try to get properties that, you know, are, you know, after market uh, value, um, below market value, I'm sorry. Um, and, and then I'll, you know, put it on the contract and sell it to an investor or, you know, assign it to an investor. Um, so I, I typically try to use, um, get properties that, you know, that are in distress. So he said, you know, oh, well, you know, I want to get my money's worth. Of, I don't just want to give the property away. Mm -hmm. So in this, and at the end of the next week, I end up seeing him again at a different family event. And I'm telling my family about wholesaling. Um, cause I have a cousin that wants to get in wholesaling. So he looks at me, he says, you know, I have this property. Um, that I'm trying to get rid of. And I said, all right, well, what's the address of the property? So he told me the address of the property. So I said, okay, I'll look at it, get back to you. So I looked at the property um, and then I actually looked at on the website, on uh, the county website and realized that they were behind in taxes like $4,600. Nice. So I called him up and I started talking to him about it. And, he, and I said, so um, what's the lowest amount you, you would take for this property? He said, man, you know, 75,000. So it went from like 130 in the beginning 
yeah. like 75,000. So, you know, I started asking some questions. I remember I asked you about it. Um, and so, you know, we negotiated a little bit um, and I put it on the contract. So because of the location, and I know nothing about Rome, Georgia, like mm -hmm. completely nothing. The comps are all, all over the place. Yeah. But I remember putting it on the contract on April, under contract on, on April 4th, I think it was. Yeah, we were at the social, social event. Yeah. Um, and so I just started sending it out to buyers, um, posting it on Let Go, um, just hitting up everybody and nobody <laughs> wanted to buy the property. And so I ended up taking it to, um, it's this uh, deal makers on Thursday. So I took it there. It's like a room full of like realtors, loan officers, other wholesalers. And, you know, so I present this deal and everyone starts looking up comps and everyone gets quiet. And I'm like, so, you know, um, well, what do you guys think? And uh, I think her name is Ebony. She's like, well, yeah, I, you know, I don't know, you know, and she's the, she's the host of the event. She's like, I, 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 I don't know, you know, this is one of those situations you might have to, you know, um, use one of the houses that sold, you know, you know, two miles away or, you know, uh, go back a few months. And I'm like, man, you know, no one is sure about this. So I had a couple of buyers that actually um, called me and they said they wanted to see the property. So I showed it to them and they said, no, I don't want to pay this price. So I'm like, all right, so let me go back and renegotiate. So I renegotiated the price and I put it on Zillow and man, my phone just started blowing up. Like it was crazy. Crazy. It was crazy. Yeah. So what I ended up doing was I just invited like all of the buyers at the house at one time, had them look at it. And it's crazy because he had a tenant in the house. Um, so I invited everybody there. And then one of the guys, um, he bought the property. Um, Man, he signed a, the contract. That is a lot of variables, a lot of moving pieces between number one, dealing, doing business with family sometimes is, is chaotic, right? Yeah. Um, it's definitely sometimes difficult. So being able to navigate through that and then getting a property that maybe didn't have the best uh, comps or, or comparables in the area um, is, is tough because a lot of times when, when we find that that's happening, it's because that, that maybe that area is more of a buy and hold area. Um, and so you've got to present that to different types of buyers. Um, if they're a buy and hold area, that means people are buying the property and they're, they're renting them just like your uncle had tenants in it, right? And then they're not fixing them up and sell, reselling them. They're holding on to them. So they never hit the market again. So you never can get a, excuse me, a good gauge of what the, uh, the, the properties were reselling for because they, they never resell them, right? So a lot of times that's what we'll see in those things. And some other, other situations that, that will come up that, uh, that you'll see that. But um, you going ahead and putting that property on Zillow exposed that property to so many different people. And it was probably already below price point of what everybody else was already offering, right? And mm -hmm. that's why you're getting blown up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so they were calling me. That, that's, that's, that's awesome. So, so you got this on the contract. I, you said April 4th, April 4th. Mm -hmm. How long between, between, between the time that you got under contract to the time that you were sitting at the closing table or you got your check? Um, I think it was May 3rd, I want to say. Either May 3rd or May 4th. We were yeah. at closing. Just under a month. Yeah, and I, I didn't even know that um, that actually the, the the buyer and my aunt because she actually owned the property they knew like some of the same people and the and the closing attorney that closed the deal they actually was the closing attorney from way back in the day when the original owner bought the house in my family so it's just weird how everything was connected. Yeah, but they still did. So here here's what you're saying is that your the person who owned the house. And the person who bought the house really could have got this deal done without you because they already knew each other. Yeah, right. well, they, they had mutual friends. Like, they didn't know each other directly, but they knew some of the same people. It was crazy. Wow. So it's like, <laughs> and it's just, some people will say, oh, well, that's luck. Oh, you know, it's her, it was her family. There, some people with that negative mindset will, have, will say those things. But if you weren't, number one, uh, uh, confident about, you know, this is what I'm doing and letting people know they wouldn't, that conversation never would have came up. Right. Number two, if you didn't understand the value of the property, if you didn't, if you didn't know how to do the evaluation, cause that's a big thing. We could, we talk about the ARV all the time, right? You know, I'm always about, about numbers, 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 because the numbers are going to dictate whether or not the property um, gets bought or sold, right? Whether or not we get it under 
a good good contract or we don't. We always say that we, we make all the money on the purchase of the property, not the sale. So we have to purchase the property or get it under contract because we don't purchase it, but we have to get it under contract for the right price so that we can add our fee onto it and it still be a good enough price so an investor will want to buy it. So you having the confidence of knowing that and saying, okay, well, 75 should be somewhere around in the ballpark. Um, to be able to do that is really what kind of catapulted this thing to, to get to the closing table. So kudos to you because there's a lot of other people that – I mean, they go to the, they go to their family reunion or their family gathering and they're not talking about, you know, what they're doing. So that conversation will never come up. So it's amazing to see that once you're in this world and once you're around the people that are doing it, you just naturally start talking about it and things start happening. Right. Right. And she was behind, like she, she was so relieved um, from, you know, the property taxes. Like I say, it was 4,600, you know, um, dollars in the hole and she just couldn't, and I don't even think the, the guy that was paying the rent, he was actually paying the rent for the area because he was a friend. So he was paying, you know, yeah. less. So, so they was kind of under on the property, you know, a little bit. So. Yeah, man. So you were able to help them out. And that's always yeah. a good thing, right? They were, they were happy at the end of it. Yeah. The buyer was happy. Yeah. And you got your paycheck. So I'm quite sure you was happy. Most definitely. <laughs> most, de <laughs> most definitely. So, all right, and, and, and your words, like, what do you think, um, or maybe, maybe you don't think, what do you think was like the, as far as the, the course only, between the course and the coaching calls, what do you think was some of the best things um, that helped you uh, kind of get through that process? Uh, my main thing um, is uh, the way you break down, like, the cops and the ARV because I was really struggling in the beginning with just trying to understand that process. Um, but the way you kind of break it down, even like just in the course with talking to us on the calls yeah. and also just in the course homework, how you break it down. So it's one of those things where you're going to study over and over and over and in the negotiation process. Yeah. Yeah. The negotiation process is, is huge. Numbers is huge in negotiation, building rapport with people. Those are all things that we cover. We're all things, we talk about, as you know, like on this coaching call last that we just had, like literally yeah. a moment ago, um, that you were on, we were talking about handling objections, right? And right. so you negotiate like a pro. Um, those are things that like, man, even if, even if it only makes you, you know, 10% better, that's 10%, you know, more closings. And in our right. business, you know, you could make, you know, five, 10, 15, $20,000 maybe even more than that in certain parts of the country. I, what, what was, do you mind telling what, how much you made on that closing, on that, that deal? Seven grand. Seven, Seven grand, grand. In, in less than 30 days. Got it on April 4th, you know, May 3rd, closing $7,000 in your pocket. And um, you just applied what you had already knew and then what you learned in the course and just through conversation and coaching, you applied it $7,000 richer. That's amazing. That's really, really amazing. And it's really a testament to, um, to who you are and you persevering, really. Because a lot of people quit. A lot of people quit, right? So what do you, with, that, with that in mind, with that in mind, uh, what do you think, um, what could be, I always like to end and, and kind of bring this to people. What do you think is the, like, the best piece of advice? If you could give out one thing to people, what would be that one thing that says, you know what, do this. And this is the best thing that you can do to, to really get you to that next level when it comes to wholesaling. Now, mind you, these people, some, some of these people don't have any deals. So what do you think is that one thing, that piece of advice? Um, just don't give up. Like, just don't quit. You know, um, if you're going to start it, just keep going. Because you have to build that momentum. You know, it takes about two weeks to, you know, break a habit. You know what I mean? So to start a new habit, you know, so just, just be consistent and just, you know, 10 X that thing, just keep going and going and going and, and just don't give up. You know what I mean? Just create your goals, what you're going for, your why, just keep going. Absolutely. That's awesome. Yeah, it really is. It's, it's definitely uh, that perseverance. As I say, we have, we got to have really wholesaling is three things. It's consistency, science, and art. Like the consistency is number one. The science is running the numbers and knowing what to do. And then the art is dealing with people, right? You get those three things, man, sky's the limit. Sky's the limit. So, man, I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Uh, I know this was uh, 
I know you were busy and, and you know you got things, other things to do. And the fact that you took your time out just to help, um, someone's going to watch this and is going to relate to you because they're going to say, man, like you went through a lot of stuff. There was a lot of adversity going through this process. There's a lot of things, a lot of hiccups that came around. Um, and, uh, you know, if I can do it and if you can do it, this is going to help that other person say, man, I can do this too. So really, really grateful for your time. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. You got any place, uh, anything you want to, uh, any like your, your social media handles, if someone wants to send you another property in Rome or wherever you're at, wherever you, so I know you're in Savannah too. Uh, yeah. or if anybody wants to sell you anything, you want to give that out? Yeah. Um, first grand investments on Facebook. Um, I don't have a website yet, but, um, that's my business page on Facebook. Yep. Okay. And we'll, we'll put that stuff in the show notes and so people can look down if they have a property in Savannah or wherever you're at, um, they can go ahead and um, send those properties to you and hopefully you guys can joint venture together or, or get that property sold for them. Right, right. Okay, I appreciate that, Tommy. Absolutely, absolutely. Perfect. Once again, thank you so much and uh, we're out for this episode. See you guys on the next one. Peace. Listen, men lie, women lie. I get it, but the numbers don't. It's evident that the course works. The only variable is you. For once, for once in your life, take a chance on yourself. It's free. You have absolutely nothing to lose. It's free. Go ahead and fill out the information. Man, so many people have doubted you. So many people have said that you can't do it. This is your time to prove them wrong, and it's free. Put your information down below, fill out the short questionnaire, and we are going to tailor a strategy session that's absolutely free to make sure that you can succeed. Take a chance on yourself. Do it now.